Hey everyone and welcome back. This week I was thinking that I would make a couple of cards and those cards would combine a few of the elements from the mixed media kit along with the cards, tags, more kit. Well, the pieces I have left of the cards, tags, and more kit. Both of my cards are just going to be a slim lines. I think that I think I can safely say that slim line is probably my favorite size. I don't know why. I just really like slim lines. I, I don't know if other people decide they need to have a favorite card size, but I do. Now, I know last week that, you know, my brain went sideways and I had the wrong flowers. And if you have the cards, tags, and more kit, I think your flowers are a darker pink than what I have, pretty sure. If you haven't got the kit, uh, if you look at the website, then it lists exactly what you will get. I am just going to sort out some of these larger pieces from the smaller pieces and the flowers and butterflies out just to get myself a little bit organized. My treasure lead chipboard pieces, the Stamperia pieces I have left, flower pack, and the Stamperia bits of paper I have. I saved this specifically. I, I love this sheet right here. I don't know why, but I do. Moving on to this month's mixed media kit, just to go over it real quick. There is a bottle of Dina Wakely Media Clear Gesso, but I'm putting mine off to the side because I have an open container in my stash. Some Lindy's Moonshadow Mist in Buccaneer Bay Blue. A jar of Glitz Magical from Lindy's Gleaming Gold. And a jar of uh, Gum Arabic? 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 Uh... This jar I've already had opened, so I, the directions are on the jar, uh, but I put it where I could read it and find it easier without having to keep rereading the smaller print. But it is a, a one-part gum to four-part pigment mix, um, and then you just add water for your desired consistency. There is this um I don't know if it has a it doesn't really have a name on it. Anyways, there is this mask from Studio Light and then a sheet of Stamperia rice paper. And my rice paper is also being put aside. Because of my original, my original plan just involved the, the Lindy's um, gesso and the mask. All right, now that, now that that's all covered, and I'm not, I'm not particularly planning on being overly complicated here. That doesn't mean it won't happen. I just didn't plan on it happening. I want to, I want to prepare my pieces. I have my card fronts glued down to just some foam. I had found a pretty large piece of foam that I had apparently used for something, but that's permanent marker, so I wasn't worried about it. It's going to be glued down anyhow. Same here. I just popped that large piece of foam underneath to to create my surface for my pattern papers so then all I would have to do is just you know pop things onto their respective card fronts or card bases when the time came this strip right here was just one of the edges that was cut down when I made the base I cut out this bit from the piece that I had left. It had flowers across the top and then just words. I actually think it was one of the cover pieces. Yeah, it was on either the front or the back cover in the paper pack. And 
I just cut out the as much as I could from what I had left of the words on it, the script on it, and then filled in the rest with this paper. So my uh, my overall measurements about five and three eighths. This is about five and three eighths inches up and then three inches here. So just what I had, you know, just pieced it together. I liked this. I had saved this specifically from last week's project because I knew I wanted to use the script part on a card. And then these are just the edges that came off here. And I pieced them together. I centered them on the overall. I centered them overall and then lined them up and pieced them together. And you can see, you can see there, I tried to keep the pattern kind of lined up a little bit, even though I don't know if it will necessarily show when I'm done, but it's put together that way anyhow. So my next, my next plan of action is I'm going to coat these with some gesso. I'm going to coat one of the treasury chipboard pieces with gesso. And I'm going to coat this vase of flowers with gesso. I'm thinking of putting the flower there. And I think this one will be a, a horizontal card front. That's the start there. But I'm going to gesso up these pieces. Um, if I find anything else that I think might need gesso, I'll do those. But right now, the large pieces. My gesso is dry. I gessoed both backgrounds, uh, this vase, and uh, one piece of the treasury chipboard, and I added some gesso to the little flowers in the from the kit, just because I thought that I thought that I should. I kind of I kind of have an idea for the flowers, and they needed gesso. My next step is just going to be randomly adding just some plain texture paste. It's not crackle, it's just a matte texture paste. Uh, definitely on the backgrounds, probably most definitely, probably most definitely on the backgrounds, maybe on the chipboard pieces. And while the stencil is still in place, I will add some color, I think. I think a lot of it is a matter of what's going where. So just some simple texture paste and stenciling and then adding a bit of color.
with the texture paste and the Lindy's dry, it is now just going to be an assembly process. I'm just going to go over a little, a little bit just to talk about them. I just added a little bit of stenciling on the vase and then just splattered on some of that Buccaneer Bay Blue Moon Shadow Mist. I added the stenciling to the top part of the card and I kept it. I liked how it came to a point, how it comes down to a point. So I just lined it up. I centered it on the card, went through it, or stenciled through it, sprinkled on some of the Moonshadow Mist, some of the Magical Powder, uh, scraped it along to, to create a, a little bit of a gradient look on there a bit. On this one, I just added a couple spots a couple spots of the stenciling and then added on some of that magical powder and scraped it across so it is not an even coat you can see some areas are a little thicker some have a lighter coating just a little visual interest there for it on the treasury chipboard piece I added the stenciling to the solid center piece or the solid center oval on here uh, and then added the magical powder the same way, spread it across. And after it was dry and I was looking at it, I decided I needed to blend in a little bit of the rest of the chipboard I didn't want to necessarily cover it all up, but I did want to blend it. So that's when I just decided to mix up some of the gum powder and the magical powder and mix it in with some water and just turned it into basically a watercolor and spread it on and then just let it air dry. And for the flowers, I mixed everything up again, brushed that on, and let them dry. And then I was having trouble figuring out exactly how I wanted to have a greeting on this card front. So, and I put it together, I took, I took this little cutout piece that it's it was one of the the fold ones where um that was half of it and if you were to fold it in half it'd be like a little booklet and that little heart there would be on the inside i backed it with some foam and then i cut out just the phrase I only wanted the word, so I cut it out. I tied this bit of theme binding just into a bow. I used I used some fray check on the ends just so they wouldn't fray. Uh, you can use glue, uh, water it down a little bit, some clear drying glue works as well. And then I took this shorter piece I had and went from the back side through those pre-made holes so that it can just go on and I'll tuck it in. I backed I backed the vase with a double stack of the foam because I really wanted it lifted up a bit more. I liked it popping off the page a bit. And then I backed the treasure lead chipboard with just a single thickness and this is also just a single thickness. So now I am just going to put things together. I'm going to glue them down. I should say it's just gluing them down now because I have already more or less picked out the remaining pieces that I want to use. I'm going to add these chipboard pieces behind this 
this treasury chipboard just tuck them in along the sides a bit there and then I will just glue them down and actually because I want this to fit a bit better I'm going to I'm just going to cut off this section of it or if this I'm going to cut off this little section of this so I can tuck it along the edge better this butterfly and I think I'm going to put the bow like that and set my braids on there. I might trim my ends. I don't know. I don't quite know yet. And then over here, the soulmate is going to go off center. I will wind this up where I want it. Add the soulmate. Tuck in these ends somewhere. And I'm going to add these chipboard flowers just for a little extra dimension on this bouquet and I'll be tucking in just these three flowers from the flower pack over here somewhere or other that's my plan so that's just where it is and then once those are on I'm just going to put them on their bases And here they are, a, a couple of relatively easy slimline cards made using the mediums from the mixed media kit and that fabulous paper and chipboard pieces from the cards, tags, and more kit. I tucked my seam binding in around the edges and I still glued a little bit underneath just to make sure it would stay in place and i did use a fabri-tac just because of that craft foam the fabri-tac sticks to it relatively well the little piece that i had trimmed off this chipboard flower cluster thingy i did just end up tucking in back here just just to use it add a little bit more depth to this card front because now this is a flat against the surface and then the vase part is on, on a double layer of foam and then I just glued on those smaller pieces as part of the flower bouquet so relatively easy ready for personalization on the inside this one i just tied a bow in that strip of seam binding and then glued it in between the 
sprays and the butterfly. I did add the three flowers on here from the flower pack, the ones that had the little pearl centers. I really only wanted the phrase from that little uh, bit of pattern paper, so I just backed it with some foam and then cut out what I wanted and then stuck it on top there. So there's that. And this card is done and ready for personalization. Not overly complicated cards. The most difficult, and by most difficult, I just mean time consuming, was just the little bit of mixed media work on them. I hope that you enjoyed these two cards and they gave you some ideas of what you can make using this month's mixed media kit and cards tags and more kit. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Give us a thumbs up and feel free to share this video. Thank you and I will see you again next week.